Hello, everybody. My name is Jeremy, and welcome back once again to Silla Republic, where this week we are working once again in San Telmo, the city across the channel from San Felipe, the capital city of the Silla Republic. And um, our project this week is a bit of an extension onto some something that I've riffed a little bit on uh, in previous episodes and am really kind of like diving headfirst into in this episode, which is, of course, this gigantic uh, cliffside that sits on the side of the city. I've done a little bit in San Felipe on these big slopes, and uh, I was really excited to try a different, a different approach to them and a much more dramatic and intense one. And uh, we're beginning the episode with something that you know you already knew from the thumbnail and the title and and some you know vague hinting in the past uh which is the next transit type here in Silver Republic which is the uh uh cable cars the San Fel- the sorry San Telmo um cable car uh system network it's not really a network it's just two stops but it's a it's a little cable car that gets you up and down this gigantic cliff um, from down here in the city to up top at what is eventually going to be a sort of a like media station and kind of small town area. Um, and I'm doing this in a way that um, I think uh, I think it's pretty cool. There's not a whole lot on the workshop for cable cars, which is a shame. I always uh, I've always thought of doing one. I've always wanted to do one. They are really cool. Uh, it's just for whatever reason uh, not really anybody's favorite if that makes sense like I think a lot of what makes the workshop run a lot of what gets new stuff up there a lot of what gets new projects going seems to be that somebody really talented uh, is really into that thing right like the reason we get very cool American trains is that there's somebody in the community who's super talented who just loves them and uh unfortunately there just isn't somebody like that for cable cars it seems like there was one person very briefly who i remember made a couple of cool cable car things and um i'm using some of them here i think um i think those uh the the actual cable network that i'm using is is by them but i think it's just a darker version of the vanilla one it's nothing super dramatically different than you get in the base game uh in any event i was super excited to get that going here it's it's a really unique uh transit type that you actually see a fair amount of in latin america um here in new york we have one that goes um it goes across the uh, the East River onto Roosevelt Island, and it is actually used as genuine public transit. It's also kind of a bit of a tourist trap type thing, but it is genuinely the way that the people who live on that island uh, get to Manhattan to go to work and stuff. Uh, and and I wanted it to be like that here. And so right now, what you're kind of looking at me doing is is working on this sort of custom station that I kind of hacked together out of this sort of brutalist uh, office building that I've had for a little while here. And um, I just kind of like use little different pieces of it. And I kind of just put this like big port onto the back of it uh, just to kind of like be somewhere for them to go. You saw me kind of like looking at the vanilla version just for like a basic idea of how the shape should look. Uh, The vanilla version, it just looks too... It looks too city skylinesy, you know. It looks too much like every like. I I've been trying to like really put my finger on what the aesthetic of the vanilla game is, and I think what I've kind of come to realize is that they just make everything look like a super soaker. Like that's what they seem to think every type of American building looks like is just a super soaker, and every European building kind of looks like an Irish pub. That's what it all looks like to me anyway. I mean, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? What do you think is like the... What do you think is the aesthetic inspiration for vanilla assets? Uh, otherwise, I have this sort of... I don't know if it really works this way all the time, but I kind of thought that since we're, we're so close to ground here, that it would make sense to kind of like have a little bit of like a dedicated right-of-way that's owned by the cable car. 
Um, so I just kind of like fenced it off and gave it this little space. I thought it looked pretty cool to have it just going literally right next to these buildings the way that it is. And uh, it like just, just, just scrapes by. And I think that looks really nice. And you'll see in the cinematics, it ends up looking really super cool. Um, and I'd imagine that it probably, uh, if you have like some troublesome teens uh, hanging out on the cable car, I bet you could get a bunch of them together and just kind of like shake it side to side. Uh, you know, like running back and forth side to side in the cable car would get it to swing enough that it would probably collide with that building all the time. Um, I would imagine that would probably be a pretty common and pretty annoying thing that uh, the local teenagers would get up to. Anyway, uh, otherwise, I have this sort of like little edge area that's kind of right up against the mountain, somewhere that I'm not going to do a whole lot of like major development. So I kind of thought I w- it seems like a good candidate for slum housing. Oh, big fire truck going by. <laughs> Hope you didn't hear that. Um, and then just doing my my normal normal tricks, you know, my normal um, normal cliff assets, normal foliage, just kind of trying to make this all blend in well with what I already have, um, and uh, just kind of. I I really love the way this city is turning out. You know, I think. Um, it's I, I was a little worried putting all the stuff onto the hillside here the way that I do that I would kind of like mess up the scaling a little bit. Um, you know, by putting too much stuff there, I kind of thought it would it would kind of tip my hand a little bit as to just how how short these mountains actually are in in real life. But I think it actually I think it turns out okay. Uh, you'll see a little bit in the second half when I kind of start to really work my way up there. Uh, just what it is I'm talking about. Um, but you can see it a little bit here. I have this kind of curvy, wiggly road going up and down it. And I'm using a lot of these retaining walls. I really think this is like... It's probably the all-star asset of this entire series is this retaining wall with the fence on top of it. Because it like has just the right amount of like grittiness to it just on its own you know it doesn't really require a whole lot of detailing to actually get it to look you know dirty and you know poorly maintained the way that i want stuff in this project to look and then this was kind of initially what i was thinking here was as just kind of like really mostly just as a thumbnail for the episode (laughs) i wanted to have this sort of very um like rio de janeiro-esque like display of uh, wealth disparity in the city. I wanted to have somebody with like this sort of nice mansion with a pool in the back and a nice yard um, just right next to the cable car, right next to the slums. I really wanted to have that like really strong juxtaposition there. I even gave them, you can see like a nice, well-maintained car sitting in the driveway. And initially that was just the idea here. I only wanted to do it this one time, but you'll see uh, in the second half, I ended up just like really taking that idea a whole lot further um, and doing a whole lot more of these sort of kind of nicer, um, these nicer houses kind of all along this cliffside. Um, and speaking of the next half of the episode, we are coming up here now on the end of the first half of the episode, the second half, we're going to work our way up the mountain, build a lot more of these sort of like cliffside properties, and we are going to build a huge media station. So I'll see you there. And here we are back, back in the second half of the episode, we are working our way up the mountain figuring out just how this is going to work you can see like you can see the 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 struggle in in my actions here you know like you can see my in my my indecision my inability to really comprehend just how dramatic some of these cliffs are you know like you can look at it and and i guess this kind of is part of the trickery of scaling right like when you the viewer look at the mountain it looks gigantic 
and then you put roads on it and you see like it kind of is actually <laughs> it is kind of ger- like gigantic but more than that it's really dramatic it's a really intense slope so every time you put a road and you don't give it an insane you know grade if you don't give it the road itself a really intense slope then you see just how tall some of these cliffs are and just how unrealistic and intense it looks so it 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 really takes a lot of trial and error a lot of trickery a lot of a lot of effort you know (laughs) a lot of effort ends up going into making this not look utterly insane uh and i think that i i think i actually succeed i think it does end up looking really great um over here you see me using that retaining wall again um trying to do different configurations here in this part of the project of like you know retaining wall rock plant like some of them the retaining walls all the way at the back of the properties some of them you know it's just kind of like holding up the road you'll see in a little bit here i'm trying to like give this cable car a little bit of clearance one of the big struggles of this episode is that the actual like the pillars for the cable cars are like insanely short for what the purpose of the cable car is right like the idea of it is that you're going up these really tall things and uh for some reason the pillars are really short and the cable cars are really tall and so you really can't put a whole heck of a lot underneath them which is a real shame because i i mean somebody somebody uh who makes assets should probably just get on this like if you want just something to work on something interesting something fun just make make tall pillars for for the cable car i mean most cable cars you'd see out in the world in real life they'd be like that they'd be really tall right like the the one in manhattan for example it goes really high up in the air because it's got to get clearance for ships to get underneath it and the ones in Mexico City are super high above those buildings because ultimately the purpose is to get up a dang mountain, you know? It's not to just run, you know, 20 to 30 feet above the ground for some stretch of land. Anyway, that rant aside, um, just kind of trying to figure out how best to work this terrain here. You know, it's 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 a lot more challenging than I expect. Um trying to come up with ways to fill this without just doing the standard like put down a ploppable surface and call it a day especially because there's really no flat areas you know usually if i'm doing like a you know like a sunken highway or something like that i'll just kind of keep things level and put the ploppable surface down and just call it a day here you know it's all slope everywhere is a slope so you have to like use different combinations of you know terraforming networks and then walls and foliage to cover any of the big cracks and stuff like that it ends up being a real a real to do in the end here and there's no easy part you know there's no like nice little coasting part of this uh but luckily um luckily there's not a lot you know like this isn't a huge area it's like just in the end all told it ends up being like maybe five five different roads along this to get to the top of the mountain so that's fine it's not really that bad i can't you know this was recorded a little while ago since uh you know between doing the episode and doing the commentary is a bit of time i am having difficulty remembering how long this took so that means it didn't take that long Generally speaking, if something takes a really, really long time to do, it gets stuck in my craw, so to speak. I, I think about it at length, and I and I get mad about it when I remember doing it. This must not have taken me that long, because I don't really remember. Anyway, trying to do a good, good amount of diversity of housing types up here, I kind of think of this as being like a later development than most of the rest of the city. This is kind of like... I, you know, thinking about the, um, you know, the spooky reputation of the city, the kind of like ghostly reputation of the city, I think that these people are kind of less, less a part of that culture. <laughs> you know, uh, some of these, these houses look more like the ones in San Felipe. These are part of like 
some sort of a population boom that happens, you know, later. Now up here, uh, you know, I, I try to, at the tops of all of these peaks uh, all over the country, I'm trying to put big radio towers just because that's that's a realistic thing. Um, you know, everywhere I've been in the Caribbean, more or less, I will um, I will encounter the same thing where, you know, you see like a big, big hill, big mountain, anything tall at all, there's going to be a big radio mast at the top of it. So uh, I am trying to be conscious of that as I develop this project and up here uh i just happened to be doing this at the same time as um bastet and somebody uh collaborated and came out with a big cool television studio so i just went ahead and uh put that up here why not you know kind of scratches both itches kind of does both of the things i needed it to do uh so i just put up this big television station up here uh and it fits the shape really nicely too uh, that was, you know, a happy mistake that it's kind of got this nice elbow shape to it. And it was right at a nice natural curve in the topography of this mountain. And then otherwise, I'm just kind of like using the pieces the way that I think they're supposed to be used. I don't know that I actually like looked at the reference um, the way that I should probably generally speak. Like... <laughs> I didn't actually like look at what the real life building looks like. I didn't really look at what Bastet did for the workshop uh, before I did this. I just kind of went for it. And I think it ends up making sense. Um, I don't know that I'm supposed to use that gate building the way that I did, but I think it looks great as a security great gate. I don't know that that's what it is in real life, but it works really nicely because I think I had to use procedural objects to make it big enough for that to work. So I don't think that's what you're supposed to do with it. But what are you going to do? Call the cops? Come on, Bastet. Just kidding. I, uh, I, I, you know, I'm sure you don't care. Anyway, uh, over here, giving it sort of like a back access area, I just wanted to use that <laughs> um, gate building again. So I just made another little area back here uh, and I kind of thought that it would make sense as like a bit of access uh, for commercial vehicles and I also thought like I think for a brief second I was considering making this some sort of a, uh, a military base as well uh, and I might come back and do that at a later date I need to start adding military stuff to this project I know that I'm going to do a fair amount of it um around the airport because that makes sense that would be a smart place to set up a lot of military stuff it's where a lot of countries do um so that's definitely going to be some part of this but we need like land forces too you know so i need to start thinking about where those go i know we have like a little bit of a military presence in san felipe but nothing like super substantial those would be a little kind of like you know outposts little little work sites i guess i don't know so let me know what you think, uh, where would make sense? Where would be like the strategic places to have military bases around? And um, I also think I'm gonna do some sort of like guerrilla outposts. I think I'm gonna have, you know, local communist insurgents having some sort of setup somewhere. So let me know, <laughs> let me know what you think of that too, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna do it regardless, but uh, let me know, I guess. Uh, and anyway, over here, working on one last one of these, uh, kind of the you know the second half of this cable car network. And up here, I keep saying network, it's just two stops. <laughs> the other half of this cable car is up here. And uh, using a similar design, basically the same building, but a little bit shorter. You saw me a little bit earlier, um, just working a little bit on kind of like making the middle of it disappear so that I could squish it down without it looking completely insane. And then this is a fun little thing that I do just as like a last little detail for it is I um, I gave it this little like, um, I don't even know what you would call this, like a, a, like a runway almost is how I was thinking of it. But I just wanted to give it kind of like a nice little little landing space I guess uh, this little cement slab that kind of comes down and out of it mostly I was just trying to hide how ugly it looks at the bottom 
uh, and it just kind of, I don't know, it, it, it maybe doesn't make sense. I don't know that you'd actually like need this or want this or whatever, but uh, I think it looks cool. So, and it, and it looks purposeful and that helps a little bit, I guess. It kind of looks like it's a, a little bit more of an intentional design. And I fence it off with a little bit of security and what what have you. And um, yeah, I love I love the cable car. I think I'm gonna put some more around the country. I might put one in. Um, I might put one in San Felipe. I might put another one here. We'll see. We'll see what makes sense. We'll see where it makes sense. Uh, up here, just giving it a little bit of you know an entryway, a little bit of flat cement area for people to walk in and out of. Anyway, we are coming up on the end of the episode, folks. Uh, I want to thank you so much for once again spending your Friday with me. I know this is a bit of a rambly episode. I didn't really prepare as well as I normally would. But uh, thank you so much for watching my show. Check me out on Twitter. I'm at Jeremy Thunder on there. Um, become a channel member for $3.99 a month, and you can get early access to every video that I make and uh, occasional bonus episodes when I feel like you are owed one. And I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much. It's been a great time. Check out my podcast, Generation Loss, and my show on GiantBomb.com. It's called Al Bummer. See you next week. <laughs>